please turn on subtitles if you need them. The transcript can also be useful for finding parts of the video. In this video, we'll look at the options which Directory Apers 12 offers for resizing file display columns. Much of this is also explained in the manual, but some things are easier to see than they are to read. In earlier versions, there were two options which are still here today. The most basic option is to use fixed size columns. I'm typing pixel sizes by hand here, but you can also resize columns by dragging them in the file display. If you use a fixed size that is larger than needed, it might use extra space, which could be more useful given to another column. On the other hand, when the size is smaller than needed, some of the details will be truncated. Nothing changes when the window is resized, so your fixed size columns may only make sense for particular layouts. Nothing changes when you move between folders either, so you have to choose one size which works well everywhere, unless you want to define custom sizes for lots of different folders. The other old option is to make all of the columns automatically resized to fit the widest item they display. Automatic resizing means nothing is ever truncated, but other important information may be pushed off to the side. Resizing the window still has no effect, but columns do resize and move around a bit when you change folders. In Opus 12 you can also set some columns to a fixed size and others to auto size. To demonstrate, I'll add the description column set to auto size while keeping the other columns at fixed sizes. The description column is a good example here because the space it needs varies from folder to folder. The files here result in fairly wide descriptions, but the descriptions in this folder don't need as much space, and in some folders almost no space is needed at all. Another new option is automatic sizing combined with a maximum limit. To show why you might want this, let's look at the file name lengths in this folder. And to do that, I'm telling Opus to mix files and folders together, and then adding the path length column, which I will sort on. As I scroll down, you can see almost all of the files have fairly short names, until I get near the bottom with a small group which have very long names. Auto sizing on its own means that you don't waste space when it isn't needed, but even just one long file name can cause the column to take over the whole window. Now you can set a maximum which will prevent that. And I'm setting a 300 pixel maximum here to demonstrate. In the folder we're in, a few of the names are wider than that, so we'll have a name column which is 300 pixels wide, as that's the limit, and a handful of the very wide names at the bottom will be truncated. Going out to a folder where none of the names are as long, the full names will always be shown, and the column will use less space. Folders that overall have shorter or longer names will result in shorter or longer columns up to the limit that you've imposed, so you now have a maximum size, and things don't get too large. Now might be a good time to show something that can help in situations like this where some of the file names are truncated. The info tips that appear when you hover over files can be customised. You can make them display the full file name, giving you a very quick way to see it without having to adjust any of your columns or window sizes. To do this, click on Settings, File Types, double click All Files at the top, and click the Info Tip tab. And you can see here that I've already added the name code to the Info Tip definition. You can use the Insert Field button to get a list of things that you can insert without having to remember all of the codes. Different types of files and folders can have their own custom Info Tip definitions. Normally, you will need to edit the All Files and All Folders info tips, 
and those are the defaults which things fall back on if no more explicit definition overrides them. You'll also want to expand the file type group section and edit things in there as well. The archives group can usually be left as is since it does not normally override the info tip, but you probably will need to edit documents, images, movies, music and programs as each of those has their own info tip definition by default and if you want the name to appear in all of those you'll need to add it to them. Ok, so back to file display columns. So far everything we've seen has used fixed pixel widths or automatic sizes based on the contents of the columns. Nothing we've seen so far reacts to changes in the window size or how much screen space is available. So you can end up with lots of wasted space and you can also end up in situations where things are so tight that you have to scroll to see important information. The new fill option can help with this. Fill mode makes the column use up all of the space that hasn't already been used by any of the other columns. If the column's contents are short, empty space will pad things out so that other columns line up neatly on the right. If the column's contents are long on the other hand, they will be truncated instead of allowing the column to push others off the side. As you resize the window, the fill column grows and shrinks while the others stay as they were. The layout remains fairly static as we change folders because, at least in this case, the other columns do not need to resize very much. Fill mode is not restricted to a single column. If you set two or more columns into fill mode, they'll each divide up an equal share of the available space. To show an example, I'll set both the name and description columns to fill mode. They'll each get half of the space which is left by the other columns. And that's a bit easy to see if I put them next to each other. If you tend to use windows with a lot of horizontal space, then the fill mode may not be ideal by itself. As you can see in this example, the name column is extremely wide, and the other columns are a long way away from it, making it hard to see which details apply to which files. You can turn on grid lines to help a little bit, but it's still fairly hard to see. In a situation like this, you might want to set the column's width back to auto, and then set the maximum to fill. This combines aspects of both auto sizing and fill mode. The column will no longer be wider than it needs to be, and when you change folders, the column size will also change, assuming that the file name sizes change. But if space is tight, the column will limit its size to ensure that all of the other details remain visible. The two remaining column sizing options also help deal with situations where there isn't enough space to display everything on screen at once. Let's add the relative size column and initially set it to auto size mode. I'm using the relative size column because it's a good example of something that's nice to have around if there's space, but you'd probably want to get rid of it if it's in the way of more important details. So right now there's plenty of room and it's nice to have those graphs, you can quickly see which files are large and small, but look what happens when the window is smaller. The file name column is now so small it's barely usable, and I kind of wish the relative size column wasn't there so the space could go back to the names. The new collapse mode is for exactly this situation. Let's give it a try on the relative size column. At first nothing looks different because we have plenty of space, but when space becomes tight the relative size column will now collapse before anything else has to resize. It'll collapse down to nothing if it has to, and it will come back when more space becomes available. If we set the date column to collapse as well, you can see that columns collapse from right to left when the window gets small, and they expand again when we go the other way. 
I should also quickly mention that Opus 12 has a new option which allows you to combine the relative size graphs with the normal size column, allowing you to have the graphs without them using up any extra space. To demonstrate the final sizing option, I'll add the description column again. The description column can be really useful, but it can also use up a lot of space in some folders. You may want this column on all the time for quick access to the information, but you don't want it to squash all the other columns. Equally, if things become tight, you don't want the column to be completely hidden, so collapse mode is out of the question, but you probably won't mind if the column is pushed off to the side, and you just have to scroll right a bit to see it. And that's exactly what expand mode is for. Expand mode usually only makes sense for the last column or columns in the file display. To demonstrate, I'll set both the description and attributes columns to expand mode. When there's plenty of space, expand mode looks the same as auto sizing. But as I make the window smaller, the expand columns will go off the side and the scroll bar appears. This is actually what would happen and what used to happen in earlier versions if all of the columns were set to auto size mode. The difference now is that we have the name column set to auto fill mode and it's no longer reducing its size. So expand mode doesn't really change what happens to the column it's set on, it changes the way that other columns will resize around it. If I resize the window even further so that both the expand mode columns are completely off to the right hand side, the name column will then start to shrink, because the other columns are still set to auto size mode and the name column will resize to allow space for them. The different sizing options you've just seen can be combined to make layouts which adapt to the available space. This is my personal setup combining auto fill, auto size, collapse and expand. And the result is like this. No matter the window size or layout, I can see all of the information which I find vital, plus some extra details if space permits, and it's all handled automatically as I resize the window. Ok, so I hope you found that useful and that you now want to try some of that for yourself. One thing that you need to know is how to save these changes. If you go into the folder options dialog, change some things and then click OK, it will only affect the current folder tab. It does not save those changes or apply them to any other tabs, windows or folders. To save your changes you need to click on the save button. Opus will then ask you what you want to do. The top option allows you to save the current setup for a specific folder and optionally for subfolders, provided that those folders themselves do not have format saved for them. This is useful if you want to view some folders differently to others. While doing this you have the option to update any layouts and saved folder tabs which point to the same folder that you're changing. You should use this if the layouts are used just to open the folder in a way that you'd normally view it but you may not want to use it if you're using layouts to open folders with special views at the same time. The middle option allows you to save your changes as the new default. This is what you'd use if you want what you've just created to become the new way to view all of your folders from now on. Similar to the above option, there is a checkbox to update layouts and save folder tabs, which effectively clears any custom formats that they have defined inside of them. There's also an option which you can use to wipe out any of the formats which have previously been saved for specific paths. Select both of these checkboxes if you'd like to use your new settings absolutely everywhere and wipe out any others. The last option is to save a named favourite format and you can type in any name you wish there. After saving a favourite format you can quickly switch to it by right clicking the format lock icon on the status bar and using the menu which appears. This list is also available via the folder menu at the top of the window. And you'll also find options for resetting the format in various ways. If you're not sure where the current folder format comes from, hover the mouse pointer over the format lock icon and information will appear that can help track things down. Here the folder I'm in is taking its settings from the local drives format. Let's go to Preferences and have a look at it. 
And there it is. While we're here, I'll quickly show some other things which folder formats can be used for. Folder formats can change the view mode when you enter a folder, so you can use them if you wish to view some folders, say in thumbnails mode or tiles mode, while keeping others in details or list mode. I have a special format saved to my C drive, which hides some things which I never want to see when I'm passing through. And I like to keep that folder tidy as I pass through it quite a lot. If I go to that folder in the lister, you can see it's actually using a combination of two folder formats. This is because the C drive format I was just showing you is set to include columns from any other matching formats. In fact, the C drive format doesn't define any of the columns by itself, they're all turned off here. It delegates that responsibility to more generic formats, since its only reason to exist is to hide certain folders. I also have a pair of special formats using regular expressions, which change the way my music albums are viewed, allowing me to see various music metadata. And finally for my downloads folder, I have a special label setup, which will highlight executable files in red, so I'm much less likely to click on something that could be dangerous without realising it's there. If I was viewing this folder normally, I might be so excited by the contents, I didn't pay attention to the subtle details. Oh, that's a nice cat that is. Oh, look at that cat. Let's see another cat. Oh my god! Whereas if I view the folder in Opus, with my label, it's pretty clear what's going on. Okay, so that's all the important stuff out of the way. I like to end these videos with a quick look at something more advanced. You don't have to understand any of this, and I don't expect everyone will, but for those who do understand it and want to dig a bit deeper, now you know it's there. So let's say you've chosen this as your day-to-day -day column setup. And let me just open this other folder, in fact I'll move it into a folder tab as we don't have much room for another window in the video frame. Sometimes you might find yourself in a folder with long names which are being truncated, to see the full names, you'd have to resize the file display itself, which isn't always ideal. In this situation, you might wish everything was auto-sizing again, like the old days, but you don't want to have to go into folder options and reconfigure everything every time you want to swap from one to the other. Well, OK, let's add this toolbar button, which I made earlier. When I click the button, all of the columns switch into auto-sizing mode. With all the columns auto-sizing, if I click the button again, it resets things to how the columns were when I first entered the folder. In my own setup, I actually put this in the column header right-click menu like this. OK, so how does it work? This isn't something built into Opus, it's implemented using a small bit of JavaScript. Let's take a look at the script. It loops through all of the current columns in the file display, and it checks if any are not already set to auto size. If any columns are not already set to auto size, the script builds up a command which will tell Opus to switch them all into auto size mode. If the list is empty and there are no such columns, it will run a different command at the end, which resets the format to the one saved to the current folder. Now I could probably do a whole video on just this script alone, which I don't really plan to do. So pause now if you want to have a look at that, and ask on the forums if you'd like help, but really I'm just putting it up here as an example, just to show you that scripting exists and it's there, and it's quite an infinite subject really. So okay, that's the end of the video, I hope you found this useful, see you again in the next one.